What's up, what's up, Instagram? I know it is late. It is 11.01 p.m. Central Standard Time, which means it's 12.01 a.m. If you are on the East Coast, what up? What's up, Chief Henry and Aish and Lady Jackie? How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? Come on in. I won't be on long tonight because it is late. I've been out all day, all evening. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Amaisha. Hey, Nicole. Oh, y'all popping on late. Everybody is on. I see everybody's up tonight. I'm, I'm really not going to be on long. So much so, my phone needs to be charged. I didn't charge my phone intentionally so that I wouldn't stay on here all night. How y'all doing? Come on in. Ricky Brown Project, Forever Young. Um, my sis, N-T-H-A-L-Y-F-E. My light keeps going in and out, so don't pay it any attention. Um, what's going on? Good evening, good evening. It is good to see y'all. Hey, Tanil, I am jumping on tonight to make an announcement. I have not really advertised it. Hey, Terry, I have not really advertised it, um, but I was asked to speak this coming Saturday, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, when we get off this live, I will put the flyer in my stories, and I will try to make a post about it tomorrow. Hey, walk away, Renee. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Micah. But I will be speaking this Saturday, which is March 25th. I am Kim Thomas. How are you? I will be speaking at SMU, at Southern Methodist University. Uh, for those of you young adults on here who have been to Closing the Gap and uh, every now and then there is a young man named Ben that comes up to sing for me every now and then. Ben is a senior at SMU. Hey, Taylor, are you coming, Taylor, or what? Ben is a senior at SMU, and he is having a revival night on his campus. And so he has um, an entire program laid out. It starts at 7 o'clock p.m. this Saturday. Again, I don't have the details to give you off the top of my head, but I will provide them in my stories tonight, and then I will make a post tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon with the specific details. Oh, yeah, Taylor, I forgot. You're on program to pray. How are we going to have church without Taylor praying? Taylor is at Dallas Baptist University, but he will be praying on Saturday night. So it, the structure of it is it's kind of like a worship night, uh, of, uh, if you will. There's prayer, there's worship, there's prayer, then worship, there's prayer, then worship. And then Elder Dobbins will bring the word. And um, as you all can tell, I am not a student at SMU, but I am glad to serve those that the Lord um, is calling forth in this day and this time. So Ben is hosting a revival night this Saturday. Pastor Dobbins will be there with us. Um, it's, it's a whole litany of people that will be there. And so you don't want to miss uh, this explosion in Dallas. It's going to be a Holy Ghost explosion. Pastor Dobbins is coming now to, babe, really? She, she looked like a student to me. Babe, really? <laughs> Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited what the Lord is doing. Most of you have heard about the Asbury Revival at Asbury College that has now been going on um, since February, I believe. And so, uh, it, and that revival has spread to multiple college campuses. And this Saturday, Ben felt led of the Lord to host a revival night at SMU. So if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I am asking you to pull up on Saturday. Yes, there are going to be college kids there, but I want some grown people to pull up so that we can help uh, them and worship alongside them, sing alongside them, pray alongside them, preach and teach and prophesy alongside them. I understand um, that God is a God. He's a generational God. He is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or if we're in new terms, he is the God of the baby boomers, the gods of Generation X, the God of the millennials, the God of Gen Z. He is God. And so we are expecting an outpouring of his spirit like never before. Hey, Clanisha, again, that is this Saturday, March 25th at 7 p.m., at SMU, you want to be in the building. We will have the details uh, listed later in my stories and I will post it tomorrow. 
I think that's all I came on to tell you. Uh, I want to remind you to prepare for closing the gap, which is on Saturday, April 1st. Um, God has really been uh, showing himself strong and mighty at closing the gap the entire this year. We have like just been thrust into another level and um, not that God has gone to another level. But what that really means is that the people of God have grown to the place that we can handle the weight of his glory. And the more that we mature, the more God is able to show his glory and to send uh, his spirit in a way that the people of God can not just experience it, but can and also maintain it. And so we are just grateful for all that God is doing, all that he is doing, has been doing what he will do. We prayed this morning. We have Wednesday morning prayer every Wednesday at six o'clock a.m. I want to remind you, we put the reminders up now on Tuesdays. This is not uh, a click or a club wherever you are at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. There is a toll free number for you to dial in and to listen to prayer. It is normally me praying every now and then. I choose some other people to pray, but 90% uh, of the time you're going to receive me praying. And this morning we really began to pray for schools and there was another school shooting today. So we just want to continue to go before the Lord in our respective places, in our respective areas and begin to just pray and ask God to continue to, to protect our students at their schools, protect them wherever they are, protect them uh, from danger seen and unseen. If you have children, if you have loved ones who are children, we want to all come together to bombard heaven on behalf of this next generation that they can go to school in peace and safety. And so we continue to lift up schools everywhere uh, from college all the way down to daycare and preschool. And so we did pray for them on today. Hey, Miss New You, this is not a long live tonight. I really just hopped on because I want to kind of put it in the ears of everyone that I am preaching again this Saturday, uh, this Saturday, March 25th at SMU at Revival Night. Uh, I will try to see if Ben and I can come on and go live a little bit tomorrow night. It would be a little bit after nine. I think we have a meeting at seven, but um, that we could come on and that he can share his vision. But I want to kind of put it out there so that you will know from me. Uh, I know he has been responsible for letting the college students know, but I wanted you to know from me. Hey, Audra. Uh, hey, The Real Wood, that I will be speaking this uh, Saturday at Southern Methodist University. And we are believing God for an outpouring of his spirit on that campus um, that will change the hearts and minds of those who come into that atmosphere. I don't know what your schedule is, Audra, but we would love to see you in the building on Saturday uh, night. But again, uh, hey, Shania. So that's all I think I'm going to talk about tonight. You know, I had um, a dinner. I spent the evening with one of my mentees. Hey, Elsa. Uh, hey, Flower Bum. And hey, Miss Kina Lene. And so um, today was, has been a day that my heart is full. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see um, people grow in their seasons and in their um, development. And so I spent the evening with one of my mentees. And I won't name her name. Uh, but it's it was just a blessing. It just warmed my heart to hear uh, the not just the growth. We all grow. So that's not anything. But to see her walking into who God has called her to be, to have been able to see her from years ago, to see now that the thing that we saw and see her walking it out was a beautiful thing. So my heart is kind of full tonight um, because I enjoy spending time with her. Yes, but I also enjoy seeing God's plan unfold in her life. And that's part of my assignment in this season. Hey, Aletta, hey, Too Savvy, uh, is really to help cultivate or create an environment where people are able to come forth and be who God has created and called them to be with no reservations, with no hesitations, with no apprehension. And so it is my prayer and my desire that you walk in total freedom and freedom in who God has created and called you to be whatever boundary or I'm sorry, whatever bondage that the enemy has used against you, whether it's the bondage of your past, whether it's 
bondage of traumatic experiences, whether it's bondage of a system that you are now currently in that is preventing you from being who God has ordained you to be from the foundation of the world. My prayer for you tonight is that you would walk in freedom because he whom the son has set free is free indeed. Indeed. Miss Kina Lene, I am mentoring you from afar. And so, hey, Vanessa, hey, Miss Bridget. And so that, that is my desire. If for anyone that I come in contact with, it is my desire, it is my prayer, it is my hope for you that you step out of the shadows and you begin to step into who God has ordained you to be. This light bulb needs to be changed, but just don't pay it any attention. Uh, that you will step into who God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you will step fully into who God has called you to be. That you will step past, hey, oh child, you will step past any lies of the enemy, any deception or deceit from childhood, any words that have been spoken over you that are acting almost as bars that are keeping you in captivity. That those, those, those words that were spoken, some of you have, it was words that you heard in childhood, whether you heard it at home, whether you heard it at school, whether you heard it from your peers, whether you were bullied, whether you were in a relationship that the enemy sent to destroy you, wherever you heard words that were spoken over you, Words who begin to function as a curse over your life. Listen, the difference in cussing you and cursing you is to curse someone is to speak to their end. And the reason why God says, I will curse them that curse you is because God is the only one that is authorized to speak to your end. So when God has already from the foundation of the world spoken to your end and someone comes here on earth and tries to usurp God's authority. See, they don't even realize that that's what they're doing. When they speak to your end and speak things against you or about you that have imprisoned you and have prevented you from being who God created and called you to be, they think that they spoke against you, but they actually spoke against God. They're actually at war with God, with who God purposed and intended for you to be. And so their words are now fighting against what God spoke about you. Their words are fighting against what God spoke about you. And tonight, my prayer for you is that you are set free from every word, from every boundary that the enemy has sent against you to keep you in captivity, to keep you addicted and going around and around the same mountain over and over and over and over again, that every time it looks like you're getting ready to make two steps forward, somehow you make a step backwards and Every time it seems like there is forward progress, that the enemy comes in and there is a foul called on the play that sets you back 10 yards, 20 yards, whatever it is, those words are broken tonight. Hey, Jada, I saw you come on. Those words are broken tonight. Tonight, by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the authority that is in the name of Jesus, every curse that has been spoken over you from the womb all the way to now, that curse is broken. And some of you, the curse was spoken even before you were born because the curse was spoken to your parent, but about their seed. I'm going to say it again. The curse was spoken to your parents but it was about their seed. So instead of just trying to curse your parents, they actually told your parents that their children will never be nothing. That's what a curse does. A curse speaks to your end. It speaks to the end of you, the destination, the destiny that you have. That's what a curse does. And somebody, they have spoken not just against you, but against your parents. This is Women's History Month. Some of us, they have spoken against us just 
for being a woman, that every woman in this bloodline can only go this far. Every woman of color that looks like this can only go thus far. Those are curses. And I need to remind you that the curse has been broken. And I want you to know, I understand when pe while people say this, and I have actually uh, been guilty of saying this for uh, saying this myself. So this is not a criticism or this is not a judgment. This is more of an enlightenment of what the spirit of the Lord said to me. You don't have to be a generational curse breaker. You just have to believe that the curse was already broken. I'm going to say it again. You don't have to be a generational curse breaker. We like to call ourselves that now. We like to say, I'm breaking generational curses. No, Jesus has already broken the curse. You just need to believe and receive that the curse was broken. I don't need to lift myself up any higher. I don't need to inflate myself and try to take uh, credit for what God has done. I don't need to exalt myself to say that I have done it. I need to humble myself under the mighty hand of God and believe and receive that the curse is broken. And when I believe and receive that the curse is broken, Everything that has been constricting me has to let me go. Everything that has kept me bound has to free me because I now believe and receive that the curse was broken. That the curse was broken. It's hot in my house. We left the house earlier. I just been home about 20 minutes and the heat was on. So I'm burning up. So trying to cool off. But I, I want you to know that the curse is broken. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was talking to my mentee tonight and it was something she said that stuck with me. And she was talking about a particular incident that she encountered about eight years ago. And she said that what that incident that she experienced did was it caused her voice to be silenced. Even though she knew she was called, even though she knows she's anointed, even though she knows she's a prophet, even though she knew she could hear from God, even though she knows God spoke to her in dreams, but the impact of this trauma caused her to be silent, even though God has always been speaking to her. And I began to think in my own mind of the seasons and the times that I allowed the external circumstances or the things that the enemy sent against me to silence me when I knew I had been called to be a mouthpiece of God. So whatever it is God called you to do, it's the place where the enemy fights you. It's the place. So if you were going to be a person like me who's called to preach and teach and to prophesy, to exhort all of these things that I am to do verbally, then the enemy will fight against me and will try to constrict me or keep me, prevent me from opening up my mouth to speak. If you look in your own life and you begin to look at the fight that you have had against you, the fights that have come against you, they are coming in the areas where the enemy knows God wants to use you the most. 
And when I say use you, I don't mean use you like when people use you. When I say use you as it relates to God, it means that God wants to speak through you. God wants to touch through you, touch someone through you. God wants to heal someone through you. Like when you lay your hands, he will heal them through you. It is God wanting to uh, use you, meaning that he wants to show forth his goodness. Thank you, Anthony function through you. So don't get it twisted with use me as if someone is abusing you. When we say that word in that word in the world, it means that God wants to show forth his glory through you. Some of the greatest tests that you've endured have been in the areas that God wants to use you. But tonight I want to remind you that the curse has already been broken. So you don't have to spend your time fighting against a curse that has already been destroyed. You don't have to spend your time fighting against the things that the devil sent against you. You don't have to spend your time saying, I- I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be the first one in my family to break the curse. No, you're going to be the first one in your family to receive that Jesus has already broken the curse. Yes, Anthony, the old school called it being a conduit for God. So tonight, I didn't come on here to be long. I didn't even really come on here to be preachy, even though I did a little bit. And I hope that something that I said blessed you. I really came on to say that we will be speaking this Saturday on March the 25th at SMU at 7 o'clock p.m. for Revival Nights. I am not the host of this event. This event is hosted by Ben, who is a senior at SMU, and God has led him to have this Revival Night uh, because we are in a season where we see revivals breaking out everywhere. And he said he believed that the Lord wanted me, that the Lord wanted me to come and to speak to his people on that night. Praise the Lord, Jada. I'm grateful. I'm glad that it was freeing and that it blessed you. I love you much, Jada. Um, So we will be uh, at SMU and I I will put the details in my story and I will make a post about it tomorrow so that you will have the details immediately. But we just want you to join us if you can. Prepare to join us. There are going to be college students there, but there will be some adults there. And we just want to see what heaven descends on this earth on Saturday night at 7 p.m., at Southern Methodist University. I love you all. Thank you all for jumping on tonight. Again, I will try to get with Ben and see if we can jump on and do a live tomorrow uh, to talk a little bit about what you can expect, but I know you can expect uh, great worship. You can expect a powerful prayer. You can expect uh, uh, an atmosphere that is conducive for sign wonders and miracles. I will try to go live there. It is in an auditorium um, there, so I don't know what the capabilities are for me to go live. I'm not sure what the lighting is like, if it's one of those, you know, these days people like dim lights and all of that. So I don't know what the lighting is like, but if it is possible, we will go live from there on Saturday night. So God bless you all. I am praying for each of you. Hey, Trin, how are you doing? We are jumping off. I will post this live a little bit in a few minutes, a little bit later on my YouTube, simply because God did give us a word in the middle of here. And so if anybody wants to go back and listen to this word, it will be posted on my YouTube channel. Again, that YouTube channel is Christy Dobbins. If you have not Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please do. Hey, Isaiah, I am getting off early tonight. I won't be on long, but I hope to see you Saturday, Isaiah. I don't know if I'll see you um, Saturday. I got on to talk about Saturday night at SMU and um, 
the Lord did give us a word. So tonight's broadcast was maybe 25 minutes. Y'all, but this could be a record. This might be a record, but I will post it on my YouTube uh, channel so that you all can go back and you can listen to it and it won't be something uh, long to listen to. God bless you all. Y'all have a good night. Love you much. Okay, Isaiah, looking forward to seeing you. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Love you, Walk Away Renee. Thank you so much. And this will be posted shortly on my YouTube. Love you, the one that loves chocolate. I'm going to post this on YouTube, so catch it. Um, this is a record, Jada. I'm going to get off before the spirit switches. God bless you, Terry. Y'all all have a good night. Bye-bye.